language is essential for human beings. Our whole life is based on it, to the point where even those who are not able to communicate by sounds find a, found a way to communicate through gestures. Um, according to the Oxford Dictionary, language is a method of human communication, either spoken or written, considering of use of words in a structured and conventional way. Another definition is provided by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and it says that language is an assemble of systematic means of communicating ideas or feelings by the use of conventionalized signs, sounds, gestures, or marks having understood meanings. By these definitions, it is clear how important is language to humans, not just spoken, but all what language means. Now we are talking about language as a tool of power, the power of language. Language, uh, we can consider how important it is in several aspects it has. And we are focusing on the power of language and how language can change our, our reality. From the moment we learn a new word or when we get to know a word for a concept, we already know, but we never found a word for it. That's how language is capable of adapting our thoughts just with the words that exist to describe them. Language and symbolic power brings together Perry Bordio highly original writings on language and on relations among language, power and politics. Bordio develops a forceful critic critique of traditional approaches to language, including the linguistic theories of Saussure and Chomsky and the theory of speech acts elaborated by Austin and others. He argues that language should be viewed not only as means of communication, but also as medium of power through which individuals pursue their own interests and display their practical competence. On the concepts that are part of his distinctive theoretical approach, Bourdieu maintains that linguistic utterances or expressions can be understood as the product of the relation between a linguistic market and a linguistic habitus. When individuals use language in particular ways, they deploy their accumulated linguistic resources and implicitly adapt their words to, demands, to the demands of the social field or market that is in the audience. Hence, every linguistic interaction, however personal or insignificant it might seem, bears the traces of the social structure that it both expresses and helps to reproduce. Bordio's account sheds fresh light on the ways in which linguistic usage varies according to considerations such as class and gender. It also opens up a new approach to the ways in which language is used in the domain of politics. For politics is, among other things, the arena in which words are deeds and the symbolic character of power is at stake. This volume, by one of the leading social thinkers in the world today, represents a major contribution to the study of language and power. It will be of interest to students through the social sciences and humanities, especially in sociology, politics, anthropology, linguistics and literature. I could not agree more with Barbara Seidelhofer, since this volume really gave me the opportunity to know academic life of, for what it is a realm of uncertainty where well-known scholars discuss their and others points of view. The school does we are to accept authority rather than challenge it. We need books helping us to become more critical, books we do not simply study with admiration but also agree or disagree with. A book for people in applied linguistics and language education. A book where to pick up topics that might be important for your job. In my opinion, you really ought to read the introduction in section 2 about corpus linguistics and language teaching. It is extremely useful to get to know the questions raised by Widowson about direct application of corpus data to language teaching. Both texts deal with the idea of the power of language, even though they are dealing with different topics. In one hand, we have a text that uh, is talking about a relationship between the hearer and the speaker, and that hierarchical relationship that gives power.
to the speaker over the hearer. And in the other hand, we have a text that is talking about linguistic imperialism, how the, the message is delivered and how can that affect what you understand of it, and also hegemonic discourse. They are both dealing with the same connection, that is the power of language. And but the power of language, we can take two interpretations from it. On one hand, that language and speaking must be distinguished in the exercise of power. The possibilities of language from the way in which language is actually used in spoken word. And on the other hand, the interpretation also gives a presentiment that the power which is exercised through that language already bears within itself its counterpower. For the language of political demagogues and tyrants can be seen through as language and by means of language itself, so that language conveys the power of violence or domination and at the same time undermines it. Related with the process of teaching and learning, there are a lot of issues over there. Most of teachers don't know the reach of the power of language and the language they are using. How can affect that to their student? You can motivate a student. You can make them proud of a bad grade. And maybe you can disappoint them because you tell them that they are, are useless and that can be a a change in their lives forever. It's a powerful tool and the teachers should know the implications of the power of language. The idea is not to use it as a command, not to use it to rule over others. The idea is to know every aspect of it and how to control it, to know more to affect other people's life in a good way. One of the ways that language can change your mind and to control you is when you have, for example, like in 1984, a new language which is used by the government to control people. They try to, to use the amount of words available they reduce that, so they will change your reality by taking out some words that you won't know, so you can think of something you don't know how to express it. There's a video that we're gonna show you, and in this part of the video says about the Newspeak and how one of the characters described it. New speak dictionaries in the novel don't just have new words in, the dictionaries themselves gradually get thinner and thinner as words are literally removed from the language. That's how it's used to control people, because when you limit the number of words, you limit the available thoughts that can be used against you. Or as one of the characters says themselves, the whole aim of new speak is to narrow the range of thought. In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible, because there will be no words in which to express it. Now, we're gonna show you another video that is related to Arrival in the movie. This movie is about some aliens and weird stuff, and the issues that humans have to communicate with them. Language helps us to express our thoughts and feelings in a much more distinct and comprehensible way. In Arrival shows us how language shapes our reality. The film's premise hinges on the idea, shared by many linguists and philosophers of language, that we do not all experience the same reality. The pieces of it are the same, we live on the same planet, breathe the same air, but our perceptions of those pieces change based on the words and grammar we use to describe them to ourselves and each other. To this point, we already know that language can shape reality, and that's why it's a powerful tool. When you have a discussion, you use it in an attempt to change your interlocutor's mind or to give strength to your arguments. Language is present in every aspect of human life, and that's why it's so important to understand and 
as much as we can to handle our resources, to express ourselves better, or to avoid being influenced by others.